Hello and welcome to the next video in the FPV Antenna Lab series. Now, if you haven't watched any of the others, go and have a look. The idea is to try and explain some of the vagaries of how antennas and FPV systems work to help you understand how it all goes together. Now, recently I did a video talking about the crossfire and antenna alignment. And the next video in the series is going to be doing more testing on what the actual effect is of getting particularly linear antennas out of phase, but also what effect there is on things like circular polarized but for this one we're going to talk a little bit about how you can increase range or with a combination of changing the kind of antennas you're using and potentially also changing the power on your model how can you affect the range now we're going to use as part of the conversation in this video something called decibels now decibels is a logarithmic scale if I can say it, so it isn't linear. So it's a bit of a weird number. If you're not uh, from a technical background or an engineer, it kind of doesn't make sense. But in one of the videos that I've done already, I talked about the fact that a 6 dB difference in either the sensitivity or the power will result in twice the range. Now, normally in dB land, 3 dB represents twice the signal or twice the sensitivity. And it doesn't mean that if you double the power, if I just grab the quadcopter again, if you double the power on the quadcopter, go from 100 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts, if it's legal in your country, that doesn't result in twice the distance. In fact, it has to be a change of 6 dB in order for it to make a difference. So if you're running on 25 milliwatts, you'd have to change it not to 50, but to 100 milliwatts, a 6 dB change to get twice the range. However, there is lots of confusion about antennas. Now, most of us would probably run something like these kind of antennas on the goggles, some kind of patch and some kind of circular polarized antennas. These are the ones from Menace. These are the ones that I use all the time. And if you have watched any of the other Antenna Lab series, you'll know I'm a big fan of the Menace antennas. But the difference in sensitivity can also make a difference too. So rather than have to get all your 6 dB difference to double your range from making the power from 25 to 100 milliwatts you could for example increase the power from 25 to 50 milliwatts again if it's legal in your country that's a 3 db change or twice the signal and you can also then use a different antenna on your goggles that might give you more sensitivity if it's 3 db more sensitive that different antenna in combination with the 3 dB increase on the model means that overall you get 6 dB. Makes sense? So let's talk about antennas first and just delve a little bit into that. So antennas, as we've already looked at, uh, there's lots of different types. The perfect antenna would have um, a dB rating of 1 and they don't exist. It would kind of look like that but the problem with this is you have a connector at the bottom to connect it onto your video transmitter and there's kind of a dead spot at the end as well where the uh, where the actual active element ends and what that means is rather than radiate the energy in a perfect sphere it actually has two dimples in the top and in the bottom. So that means in reality, most of the antennas that you're going to be using that are like this, including circular polarized antennas, will have a rating of about 1.09, 1.1. And that's because rather than being a perfect sphere, they kind of smudge into the top and bottom. Now, patch antennas have a much higher gain. And that's because if you think of these antennas as like a light bulb on the end of a pole, so if you just had a bare light bulb and lit it up, the light would go in all directions. Whereas with a patch antenna, it's more like a torch where when you turn it on, it comes out in a beam. So that the sensitivity that's all around this antenna is kind of collected into one direction. And that's what helps the sensitivity. Now, there are far more exotic kind of antennas that you can get that will give you more range and give you uh, much farther distances. You have things like uh, this helical antenna. You can get many, many turns in things like this and each turn gives you additional sensitivity but makes it more and more directional. But if something like this is 3 dB more sensitive, it'll give you about 40% more range. If it's 6 dB is more sensitive than the antenna you're already using, that will give you twice the range just on its own. So that's what the dB ratings mean when you're looking at them. Hopefully that explains a little bit more. If then we talk about the power on the model, 
So a 3 dB change would be a doubling of the signal. So that would be from going from 25 to 50 milliwatts or a 6 dB change, which would give you twice the range, would be from going from 25 to 50, double it again to 100. That would be 100 milliwatts. So if you went from 25 to 100 milliwatts, in theory, you'd get twice the range if you didn't change the antennas on your goggles. But hopefully now you're getting an idea that the power and the difference in the signal and the difference in the sensitivity, both measured in dB, you can add up. And you can get further than twice the difference if you have more than 6 dB. So let me jump to the last slide on this. And this is data from Menace RC. Again, link down in the description. Go and check out their antennas. They're a really nice bunch of people and make some cracking stuff. Uh, this is a great way to kind of explain how it all works. So for example, if you um, have uh, twice the power, that's a change of 3 dB, just like we were talking about. So we're looking at the green section at the moment, the bottom of the green section. So if you went from 25 to 50 milliwatts, doubled the power, we'd only get about 40% more range. However, if we had four times the power, went from 25 milliwatts on the model or up to 100 milliwatts, again, if that was legal in your country, then that would give you twice the range. But you can also go to 12 dB and 18 dB. And similarly, on the other side, if you half the power, then you also start to decrease the range as well. But the really cool thing is, is that if you wanted to get more range, you not only can change the power on your model, you can also increase the sensitivity of the antennas that you're using. Again, more sensitivity usually means they're far more directional. And this little graph kind of gives you a rough idea of what the effect on the range would be. Now, all these things are slightly theoretical. Your uh, mileage will difference with tide, weather, traffic. So uh, don't use them as, uh, as kind of red. The other thing that I'll point you to is the range calculator, which is on the Menace FPV website. I'll put a link down to that below as well. That's really good if you kind of put in there the antennas that you're using, the frequency that you're using, the power that you're using. It kind of uses some of this DB magic to kind of give you a rough estimate of how far you can fly. But hopefully that explains a little bit more about how power levels on your quad and how sensitivity of the antennas work together to change the range and if you had a 3 dB change increase in power on your model and a th using a 3 dB more sensitive antenna on your goggles that would result in twice the range. Similarly you could keep the antennas the same and you could have a 6 dB change or four times the power on your model and that would give you twice the range or you could keep the power the same on the model and use an antenna that was 6 dB more sensitive and that would give you twice the range. Or you can increase the power here, use much sens more sensitive antennas and get much more distance. Again, just be careful in the particular country you're flying in. Flying beyond line of sight tends to be illegal in lots of places. But if you're struggling to get a bit of distance and you're trying to figure out how to calculate that and what all this DB stuff means, hopefully that's a little bit clearer. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.